Thank you, God, for the opportunity to make another video. Welcome back to the Money Pot channel. And in this video, we will be discussing and furthering this idea and understanding of how cryptocurrency will affect the world. Let's get into the video. Now, in this video, I want to introduce one of the main organizations that I believe is going to be vital for understanding how cryptocurrency will be affecting the world, as well as a few countries that are starting to implement cryptocurrencies into their citizens' daily lives. And as well as the notion that as our technology continues to advance, it will be fulfilling end time prophecy in the Bible. So if you have not already, go check out my How Cryptocurrency Will Affect the World video. This is my second time using this title because I believe that to fully understand this question, we need multiple videos. I might just make it into a series. Make sure you stay tuned and turn on those post notifications because I probably will be doing more videos on how cryptocurrency will affect the world. Now, you're going to want to make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video so that you can get a full understanding of the concepts that I'll be talking about as well as information on cryptocurrency that you're not going to want to miss out on. Swift is talking about going live for ISO 222 in November of 2022. And we need to be understanding how cryptocurrency is going to be affecting our world because Swift will be utilizing cryptocurrency to send money, their central banks to send money. Will it be used by XRP? Who knows? A lot of people are saying that it will, but who knows? But we need to be prepared because in November of 2022, I believe something very, very drastic will be happening in regards to cryptocurrency. So there's an institution that I believe that we should be aware of in regards to learning and understanding how cryptocurrency will affect the world. And that is the World Economic Forum. The World Economic Forum is, an, is the International Organization for Public-Private Cooperation. The forum engages the foremost political, business, cultural, and other leaders of society to shape global, regional, and industry agendas. Agendas for what? So I'm not going to get too deep into the World Economic Forum. I do believe it's an important entity for us to understand. But one thing I do want to know is that they did hold a conference in 2020 titled The Great Reset, um, which basically talked about a, a transition from the old way money was moved into a new, which I do believe is going to be important for understanding how cryptocurrency is going to affect the world. All right, now, so I want to talk about China, which has a great relationship with the World Economic Forum. And it... Its relationship, Xi Jinping and, and Klaus Schwab, they have a good relationship. Um, but some of the things that we are seeing in China in regards to how cryptocurrency is going to affect the world can maybe give us an insight on how it will affect our world here in the West. I will provide all the links below for this information. But here are two bullet points that I found really interesting just in beginning this thought and, and how cryptocurrency is affecting China. However, China's cryptocurrency ban comes amid fears that cryptocurrencies were facilitating capital flight from its markets, bypassing conventional restrictions, restrictions that were put in place by the Chinese Communist Party. Also, China's cryptocurrency ban is part of a new trend in Chinese economic policy toward greater state intervention epitomized in the Common Prosperity Campaign. But then we see in the second bullet point where it talks about China's economic policy, which is geared towards greater state intervention. And we see here now that the People's Bank of China is starting to work on China's digital yuan. All right, I just want to take a quick break from the video and get back to this notion of how as we continue to see technology advancing, we will start to see the fulfillment a biblical end time prophecy. Get out your Bibles, 2 Timothy 2, 2 Timothy chapter 3. You must understand this. In the last days, there will be violent periods of time. People will be selfish and love money. They will brag, be arrogant, and use abusive language. And in relation to this question of how cryptocurrency will affect the world and the notion that as technolog technology continues to advance, we are going to see the fulfillment of biblical end time prophecy. Verse two, people will be selfish and love money. Since the pandemic happened, we have seen the rich 
get richer and the poor get poorer. People are becoming more and more arrogant and self-centered. If you haven't already, go check out my first video on how cryptocurrency will affect the world. I mainly talk about central bank digital currencies and really how they are going to affect how banking is done. But it's extremely important to understand why governments are looking into CBDCs, mainly due to the fact that they are stable in nature. Um, CBDCs, I, I think, are going to have a, a dramatic effect on our daily lives. Um, and they are going to present some questions. We see here some of the questions that it presents is the government's ability to understand how people are transacting and having full visibility in that the digital wand will give the government greater visibility into the financial transactions of its citizens. And we see here, Yaya Funisi, I, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, but adjunct senior fellow at the Center for a New American Security says, the government is going to be able to trace all transactions generally, whether they are anonymized or not, whether there's the ability for you to know the person who it is or not. And then continuing on, Fanusi said the Chinese government can already go to the payment companies and get the data. But, and that was in regards to WeChat Pay and Alipay. But with the digital yuan, they won't need to take that extra step because they will already have direct access to that data with the digital yuan. They said, he said, they barely have to lift a finger. The data comes straight to them. Let's take a look at this clip I found from a show called Prophecy Watchers in regards to China and this cashless society. He's not a Christian, okay, which was helpful in the sense of he wasn't biased in, in any, of, any way at all, but he said, you guys think that this cashless society, I mean, you guys, some people talk about it, you know, but it's not a conspiracy theory. He said, when you go certain places in China, China has put into place, because they can as a dictatorship or as you know, tyrannical government, they have just turned off cities and said, this city you're going to be 100% digital. And so you go there, he goes, they don't take money anywhere. And you're talking, this isn't a small city, this is a big city. They're in there with their, um, on their phones, which is, they already have the wallets connected to Alibaba and all these other companies. And so they're, they're, they're perfecting the system with their scores. So you think about that where all of a sudden you get a phone call from your mortgage company and they say, hey, we've noticed that you've been speaking about this, 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 or maybe whatever, however they heard it. Uh, we're calling your mortgage due, amongst other things. So you have this censorship as well as control. Hmm, a very interesting clip here. Just made me think a little bit more about how cryptocurrency will affect the world. All right, now let's take a look at Nigeria, which has a, a, a more similar bit of political structure to the United States in comparison to China. So we see here Nigeria became the first country in Africa to launch a CBDC. The e Naira. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I'm sorry. It's basically a digital wallet that can be used for contactless in-store payments, as well as for transferring money. To access the e Naira, the user must also have a national identification number. And the article says, this has led to criticism. Proponents of CBDC say, they are to reach out to people who don't have bank accounts, which is another uh, benefit that individuals are saying of CBDCs and these wallets. However, critics say there'll be an overlap between those with bank accounts and those without a national identification number or a smartphone. So here's something else I found pretty interesting on the Niger Ni Nigerian <laughs> digital currency. And listen, all these links are provided below. Go do this research for yourself and don't just take my word for it. Get an understanding for yourself, please, please. The hideous thing about the Nigerian digital currency is that it centralizes money even more and preserves the oligopoly power of the CBN. Unlike crypto assets such as Bitcoin and Ethereum that aim to democratize and decentralize finance, the Nigerian crypto digital currency grants near total control to the Nigerian Apex Bank. And here as well, found this interesting. This would enhance control over the level of access a Nigerian citizen has to a financial system, particularly if the citizen attempts to engage in behavior considered threatening by the financial authority, not considered by the general 
public, but by the financial authority. And of course, things that they consider to be threatening would be what? Speaking out against them, uh, trying to form uh, groups that would be against them. And in the beginning of this video, I said that these technological advances that we're starting to see is the slow fulfillment of end time prophecy. Go to your Bibles, Revelation 13. We'll start at verse 16. The second beast forces all people, important and unimportant people, rich and poor people, free people and slaves to be branded on the right hands and on their foreheads. It does this so that no one may buy or sell unless he has the brand, which is the beast's name or the number of its name. So we see that the mark of the beast has to do with something related to finances. Could it be cryptocurrency? I'm not sure. Who knows? But it's important to be mindful of biblical end time prophecy and how we are living so that we, you know, I believe so that we make sure that our hearts and minds are not falling victim to the devil's devices. So yes, technology is advancing at a greater pace, but at what cost to our ability to live free? Earlier this year, we saw the Biden administration put out a task force essentially on this initiative towards central bank digital currencies. And in reality, the United States is behind a lot of uh, developing countries, which is unfortunate, but at least we have started. So we're just gonna have to see what the United States um, comes up with in regards to policy, in regards to regulating it and laws. I think that the United States is, won't potentially act how Nigeria's government is or how China's government is in regards to central bank digital currencies. Uh, I think that you are just maybe lying to yourself potentially. Um, if you look at the Patriot Act, which is a law started, created right after 9-11, it talks about, it gives access to uh, federal investigators to looking into our transactions, our phone records in, in the wake of anti-terrorism, but it does take away uh, some of our privacy rights. And could it be used for cryptocurrency? Who knows? Who knows? So thank you all for tuning into this video here on how cryptocurrency will affect our world and us taking a look at these two countries and um, you know basically how it's been rolling out and you know just understanding the amount of control that governments may have with central bank digital currencies. Hope that you're able to find it informational and beneficial in understanding that as we continuously advance in our technology, we're just seeing the fulfillment of end time prophecy in the Bible. Hope that you're able to find it informational though. Like, dislike, share, subscribe, do what you do, but I appreciate you. Until next video, stay blessed, stay healthy, stay prayed up. Peace.